In this video, I'll be looking at the capstan tachometer feedback signal conditioning in the Revox A700. If you've seen my previous video on this machine, you'll know that my example has failed TCA servo amp chips, and so I replicated all affected functions with an ESP32 microcontroller. Since that was successful, in the interest of science, I'm exploring what it would take to cover all the remaining transport functions as well. As part of that goal, I see caption speed control as being the most challenging due to the precise microsecond timing required. For example, at 15 inches per second, the flutter specification is plus or minus 0.06%. The time between tachometer rising edges is 625 microseconds. 0.06% of that is about one third of one microsecond. Achieving close to the scale of timing is going to be difficult without compromises such as skipping pulses. It's hard to beat analog circuits that have megahertz levels of bandwidth. My preliminary work on this idea a few months ago has shown that the ESP's ability to control speed was not great using the tachometer feedback to regulate speed based on timing between pulses. At 3.75 inches per second, that's two and a half thousand microseconds, but I was seeing variations of around 30 microseconds. Before I proceed, I need to ensure that the tachometer feedback signal is of the highest quality. The A700 uses a direct drive capstan where the motor's field windings are located inside the cylindrical iron rotor, what's called an inside-out torque motor. It's a 125 volt AC capacitor run induction type where the two-phase alternating field induces eddy currents in the rotor that influences a torque in one direction. The rotor is pulled along with the internal alternating magnetic field, but at a much lower speed. This type of motor is specifically designed to run in a stalled condition without overheating. Speed control is by tachometer driving a phase-locked loop servo with a crystal-based timing reference. That's used to vary the AC current to the motor windings using a power transistor. The tachometer is an electrically excited variable reluctance, or VR for short, in ring form placed around the motor with internal teeth facing a matching number of external teeth on the motor's rotating outside diameter. 120 times per revolution, the magnetic reluctance changes through one cycle. A small regulating current flowing through the VR coil is influenced by this, causing a ripple in the current. Using a ring design seems unusual for this type of sensor, but I suspect they did this as it should neutralize any mechanical errors such as eccentricity or tooth pitch variations. It may have even been intended to lower the effect of stray magnetic fields from the motor windings as everything contained inside the ring circumference is theoretically averaged. The resulting sine wave seen in the voltage change across the sensor's coil must be processed into a square wave to provide precise feedback to the phase lock loop. Since my A700 does not have a working TCA561 servo amp, I'll be using the ESP32 microcontroller to drive and regulate the capstan motor to approximately 200 RPM, which corresponds to a tape speed of 3.75 inches per second. I picked the lowest tape speed because speed control is more difficult with a slower rotating mass. Servo gain will be set as low as practical to avoid adding any servo response jitter to the results, so we won't always see exactly 400 Hz. The experimental method I'll be using is to duplicate the original signal processing circuit and test that independently of the A700's original electronics and power supply. There are actually two slightly different variations of this design in the original production span, so I'll use the latter, what owners call the Mark II. It looks like a small improvement over the earlier design, but also deletes the troublesome TCA561. My A700 has the former Mark I revision installed, which will only be used for comparison as needed. This is the Revox Mark II capstan signal processing schematic. Starting at the left, the VR sensor is connected across pins P1 and P2, where it's provided with a constant current source of about 25 to 30 milliamps regulated by transistor Q3. I measure this value from the existing A700 circuit as it's not specified anywhere in the documentation, other than a note about a certain point being five volts above ground, which works out to be 31 milliamps. 
We are only interested in the analog signal processing up to the input of the TDA-1000, where the yellow arrow is. This circuit is designed for a regulated dual rail supply of plus and minus 12 volts and a single 5 volt rail. After the constant current section, the VR signal is stripped of DC and passively high pass filtered via C3 and R5. Then it's actively filtered using the first op amp in the IC1. From my research, this filter type is closest to a saline key design, but there are modifications made for which it's difficult for me to predict the re results. The filtered sine wave is passed to the second op amp in IC1, which is configured for maximum gain, which means that the vast majority of the sine wave peaks are clipped off leaving behind just the transition around zero, resulting in an approximate square wave. The positive half of that signal drives the base of NPN transistor Q2, which results in a clean square wave at the collector, assisted by providing a slight positive feedback to the op-amp to add hysteresis. The colored arrows indicate where I'll be placing scope probes to assess the performance. When replicating the Revox circuit, I had assumed that this would work at least well enough so that I could continue on with the software development. To simplify that transition, I designed the circuit to be configurable to operate both with the original dual rail supply and alternatively with a single 10 volt rail, which is what I have available on my ESP32 prototype perf board already installed on the machine. In dual rail configuration, the circuit is equivalent to what's found in the original Revox design with the exception of the 5 volt rail, which I've derived on board off the plus 12 volts. In single rail mode, the VR sensor current regulated circuit still needs a clean supply of around 24 volts to develop enough current. I quickly found out that the A700's 24 volt rail is far too noisy for that purpose. So in the following tests, I'm using the test board in dual rail mode only, where a regulated 24 volts is present between the minus 12 and plus 12 rails. I've also added an output scale to 3 volts for the ESP32. For bench testing, I'm using a laptop as a sine wave source since I don't own a function generator. At 400 hertz, the square wave output has excellent rise and fall times of under one microsecond. Note the color assignments for each signal. Most important for the frequency response up next is the magenta channel, the output of the active filter carried out by the first op amp. As a note, that filtering causes a phase shift in the signal, which is of no concern in this application. The input at the green channel will sweep at a uniform level of about one volt peak to peak from 10 to 2000 Hertz over one minute. That level is about what the VR sensor outputs. Play close attention to the frequency readout at the upper right along with the amplitude of the magenta signal. I've sped up the video by twice just so it isn't too long. Here's about what I think this filter is doing using the analog devices website. The cutoff frequency is well below the working range of the signal. Here I am hooked up to the machine now and uh, I've, I'm setting the VR current to 25 milliamps. Here we see the performance at 400 hertz which is 3.75 inches per second. You can see the green VR signal is all over the place and the magenta signal is not a whole lot better after filtering. The light blue is the output of the second op amp, which is a proximate square wave. And of course the yellow is the final output, which is fully squared off. Next, we're going to see a spin down test where we remove the feedback signal and let the motor go up to full speed and then let it drift down back to sync speed. You'll note that the 
uh, interference is not so bad when the motor is not powered. Just for reference, this is the performance of the circuit, the Mark I circuit that's in this A700. Following this are two spectrographs of the VR signal recorded on my laptop and analyzed using Audacity. I should note that the peaks in the graphs have been averaged over about one minute, so they're not necessarily all present at any one moment. I've added the signal's audio to this video, so beware it could be loud. First up is the raw, raw VR signal. The second is the same signal with all spectra from about 350 to 450 hertz removed. You can hear and see that the noises outside the primary signal seem to be mostly varying 50 cycle hum. reason I suspect that the existing VR sensor performs so poorly is that the magnetic field produced by 25 milliamps over such a large ring of iron will be relatively weak compared to ladder sensors that are focused on one small area as we find in some other Revox models like the A77. My options are to persist with the existing sensor or change the sensor type or technology. Aside from VR, other options are optical or hall effect. Thinking about the messy signal that could result from an optical reflective sensor, I can see that one big advantage of the existing sensor is that the outputted sine wave has no significant distortion. The Hall sensor might also be affected by the motor field flux. The only issue with the existing sensor is that frequencies under 400 Hz are not being adequately filtered out. One way forward is to design and build a new two-stage active filter that needs only one IC, four capacitors, and four resistors, and those values are determined by deciding on a response curve and simply using an online calculator. I'll aim for a roll-off of around 400 hertz. After building this on a prototype board, I tried inserting the two-stage or four-pole Bessel high-pass filter both before and after the Revox active filter. The difference was minimal, but adding it afterwards had the advantage of running a stronger signal through the new filter as a Revox filter adds some gain. As I installed 20 turn trim pots, I was able to test several minus 3 dB cutoff frequencies. I tried 350, 400, 450, and 500 hertz. 500 hertz worked the best, but significantly attenuated the 400 hertz primary signal, so I think a 400 hertz cutoff is the best option. These three clips cover 400, 800, and 1600 hertz, which of course are the three speeds. You can see the magenta signal is quite a bit improved, but it's still got a bit of wobble to it. I was thinking of building a, another filter that with twice the number of stages, but meanwhile I found an intriguing part on DigiKey, which is a gear tooth sensor using GMR technology, and that looks promising. So I tested that on the tape motion sensor flag wheel, and that works quite well. Um, there's another video that shows that. So I'm going to try and install this into the capstan and see what happens. Thanks for watching.